Hey guys, Ray from Love Your RV. So as many regular viewers know, I do an awful lot of product reviews on this channel. And a lot of it is provided by companies or a lot of it is stuff I purchased myself. Anyway, what I try to do is give you the initial review and then even come back with a, a longer term review after I've used the product, say, you know, as, as long as a year or two, just so you see if it lasts or if anything cropped up, any likes or dislikes I may have. So here's a video I put together with nine more updates on stuff I've reviewed in the last year or two. First up, we have what's called a shark bite fitting. So a little under two years ago, I installed this. You can see there's a T fitting and then an elbow fitting and some PEX tubing there. Now my RV utilizes this, what they call flaret fittings, and they've been pretty good over the years, but this just made it very convenient to uh, install it, especially in this tight area. It's in my basement storage. So at the time I asked uh, my viewers what they thought of it, and I'd say the majority of people didn't have a problem with the shark bite fittings. Some people figured it may leak, but uh, going on two years now and so far no problems. And we've uh, spent one winter with the RV and we also went down south and took some pretty rough roads. So I'll call it a thumbs up. So next we have this Flowjet portable waste pump. I decided to go with the Flowjet. It was a little more pricey than some of the other models on the market, but a couple of reasons. The amperage was 16 amps. It was one of the higher amperage ones, 13 gallons per minute, one of the higher flow rates. Also it was made in Mexico, not China. So I imagine the motor must be a little better quality than some of the other ones on the market. Anyway, I got this last fall in October. I wanted to use it to pump waste into my sister's place when we were staying in the driveway. And then I used it uh, during our uh, stay down south for about four months of boondocking and uh, about six weeks here in provincial parks to uh, dump uh, my, my tanks into a, a portable tote so I could take it to the dump station. And it's worked perfectly well. I've just taken it apart right now to kind of clean everything. It's one thing I like, it comes all apart. Also, all these pieces are available for replacement, so that's one good thing. If something breaks, they're readily available. I have uh, in the manual, I have all the part numbers, and I've done searching online, and they seem to have all the, all the different pieces available. You can just kind of see how it works here. This is the, the guts of the thing, the chamber. So this sits on the motor right there, and then this is kind of a a rubbery impeller that fits in there and as it spins it draws liquid through a plate at the top here. So the liquid gets drawn through and then that impeller turns and then it spits it out this tube at pressure so you can uh, send it down a, a water hose. So that would go on top like that and then there's a, on top is your uh, blades that chop up the, the waste spinning. It's almost like a blender, really. High-speed blender for your, uh, your sewer waste. And then this sits on top of that, and there's even some ridges up here to help uh, chew things up more. So by the time all that high-speed chewing goes on, and the waste goes down there and spins and gets shot out. The particles are less than a quarter or an eighth of an inch, so they can go down a three quarter. I put a three quarter inch uh, garden hose on it. And it works quite well. But like I say, I've just taken it apart and cleaned everything. One thing I notice when you take it apart, there's some uh, paper gaskets here. Now these are actually pretty expensive, like 12 to $18 I find online, but I think what I'm going to do is you can buy just sheets of uh, paper gasket material and kind of cut your own. They're pretty simple gaskets, so I should be able to save money that way. Um, it also has a, a switch to uh, turn it on and off. And in here is a 20 amp fuse for protection. So like I say, it's worked quite well. 
one thing that uh, a boo-boo I just made <laughs> a couple hours ago is I had the thing all set up and I was ready to pump and I had a cap for the thing and I had the cap on and I turned on the the water pressure and I didn't have any of the the, the openings I was going to like flush it out before I messed around and worked on it so I actually ended up without any openings and this actually blew the, the cap right off and I ended up busting some of the bayonet connections here kind of a drag there was only one connection left so what I've done you can buy this piece I looked online but it was about $75 US so with shipping and stuff it probably cost me about $100 to get the replacement part that I just broken so what I've done is I, I use this anyway this clear elbow and that on the input side so I've just taken and glued that on the only problem is when I go to clear any hair or stuff down it's going to be a lot longer so I'm going to have to use some kind of like longer thing to, to get the hair out because what happens is on this thing when, it, when it's on there if you get any hair coming through you know like hair that went down the shower drain or whatever bathroom drain it'll wind around there so every once in a while you have to kind of get in there and remove that hair but that's all I've really done for a maintenance while I'm using it is I, re I, I remove any hair around that and also after each time I use it I, I put a little bit of olive oil in there just to keep everything lubricated I had that tip from someone that told me that's what they do it seems to have worked out well Anyway, that's been a, a good thing and it's really helped us increase our boondocking time to be able to move waste and also being able to stay at uh, someone's driveway and be able to pump our waste into their sewer system. Let me just put it together, I'll give you a demo. I'll just give her a quick test, make sure it's still working. Got it hooked to a battery here. Some water going into it. There you go. If you want to see more demos of it, I'll, I'll link to my videos I did where I demoed it uh, working to dump into my uh, sister's house and also uh, my sewer toad in my truck. Next, we have an update on the water pump that I installed back in early January. Uh, the original water pump that I've had for many years was starting to get a little old, so I decided to replace it. And actually ended up doing a few other mods at the same time, so I'll show you those too. Anyway, this is my kind of custom-built little enclosure for where the water pump lived, where the OEM put it. And what I did is I replaced it with... Uh, you can see in there it's called USA Adventure Gear Water Pump. They're out of Colorado. So it's been a good pump so far. And also on the advice of some of the commenters, I put in a little accumulator tank. And what that does is it really evens out the flow when I just have the tap barely cracked open. It'll keep it nice and even and also reduces pump cycling so it will increase the life of the pump kind of redid some of the original uh, hosing and stuff like that, shortened things up and it's worked quite well. And while I was at it, I also installed, this has got a USB uh, readout for my DC voltage and there's also a, a, a power, 12 volt power socket, like a cigarette lighter socket in there. And I can turn it on and off with a switch. So I wired that into some power that I had run over here. Things work pretty well. I'll give you a quick demo of it on low flow. You can see how it maintains a nice even flow even with the tap not fully cranked on. 
and it's fairly quiet. So while that's off, then this thing has a, I don't know, it's like a liter or so of capacity and it kind of just evens everything out. And this system's worked so well for me that, that now even when I'm on full hookups, I'm still using my fresh tank, a 60 gallon fresh tank. So usually like once a week or so, I'll just go fill it up. That way I'm not connecting to actually the city water. I'm always coming out of my tank. You know, like, why would you do such a stupid thing? Well, our cougar is now 11 years old. So, you know, some of the plumbing starts to get a little old and you can sprout leaks. This way, if there's any leaks in the cougar, I'll hear the pump start to cycle abnormally. You know, if you just get a slow leak in a pipe or a connection, it'll slowly drip. And I'll notice right away that the pump is coming on for no reason. And that'll let me go and explore things. Because in the past I've been on city water and I've had like a little leak. Especially where the water heater connection is. And it'll just drip a bit. Until uh, finally I don't notice it until something's dripping below the rig. And then I find out, oh, the water heater's been slowly dripping. So that's worked out well. And one more sort of plumbing water related thing is our UV system for purifying water in the RV. It comes out of this little tap here, a couple liters a minute so we can use it for drinking water, brushing teeth, that sort of thing. So that we don't need to buy bottled water anymore. We feel pretty confident in it. Um, it's been uh, using it for a good solid eight months boondocking with various water sources and it uh, Worked really well, no sickness, water taste was pretty good. Sometimes if we were in hard water, you would kind of notice a kind of a flatter taste, but uh, didn't have any nasty tastes at all. And that's uh, underneath here, you can see, there we go. Up there's the UV unit, draws very little power and only draws power when it's on. So I didn't really even notice it in our boondocking system as far as power draw. So right now I'm going to actually swap out the filter there. See it's a Wooter or Wooter filter that they use. It's kind of a pre-charge filter. So here's the replacement. It's exactly the, the same size and everything. They've just kind of changed the labeling of it. But it's a WD-4K model made in the United States of America, replace WD-4K filter systems within one year of install date. So I installed this system about a year ago. They're usually good for 4,000 gallons. I'm probably way under that, but they say to change it every year. So I'm going to change it. This thing though is not cheap. Um, it went for about $65 on the Acuva website but once a year is not too bad and basically this is like a kind of like a carbon filter i think anyway it helps uh, it helps get rid of any um sediment or anything like that and uh, probably makes better taste because you don't want any sediments or small particles getting into that uv um, system or it won't work properly now when i fill my tank on the rv i have three filter system of everything going into my fresh tank. This is sort of just the fourth uh, extra filter just to make sure everything is completely out of the water before it goes into that UV system. So it's easy to change. It's just kind of like got the special quick connects on it at the little hose. And I also have a little turn off here. I can turn off the water going into it. Just drain out any water. Probably just get a few dribbles or whatever. Let's see, just press these down, pull out. There we go. Pull one out. Okay, let's press fit that. There's a little flow direction that says water flow this way on it. Get in there. 
this should just press fit into that one. There we go. Should be good to go. run it a bit. Get all the air out. All the new filtery material. Sometimes some carbon will come out of that. Okay, looks pretty good. One thing I should mention too is I haven't had any leak problems with these skinny little water tubes. You know, they're just quick connects. Um, but I, have to, I do watch them and that's another reason I like to use my water pump if I ever get a little leak in here. I would know right away. Also, another thing I forgot to mention with the water pump is if I do get a leak and we're not around or anything, at least the only amount of water that can leak is whatever's in the fresh tank. If you hook the city water and you forget to turn it off and it leaks in your way for all day, you could have a really big mess when you come back. Anyway, that's worked out pretty good. Before I throw away this old filter, I thought this would be a chance I could take, take a saw, cut this apart, see exactly what's in it and see the condition of it after a year of use. Okay, a little different than I was expecting. It's full of kind of a black sandy material. And at the end there's a, a filter and a screen on the input side of it. So yeah, a little different than your typical kind of paper filter. Hmm, interesting. Anyway, I can't really tell if it's uh, worn or not. I imagine it probably looks black from the start. Next, we have the Titan cooling fans for the fridge. What this does is they are drawing air in through my fridge vent into the cavity, and then that pushes it up, 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 and then out the roof vent. And I have another set up there you only really need one set, but uh, when I was doing the review, they sent me two. So both have performed well, and they stayed really quiet. Here is the controller. You can see it's on auto right now, and it's not even turned on. Unfortunately, in the Pacific Northwest, we're not really getting much of a summer. We've had a few warm days, but a lot of cloudy, cool days. But I'll just switch it over to manual so you can see and hear them. The thing I like about it most is they're very quiet. Hardly make any noise at all, but they, they do move enough air that it keeps the, the fridge working more efficiently so your, your ice cream stays hard even when it's like 80 or 90 degrees out. So later in the summer, fingers crossed, I'll, I'll need them. <laughs> as far as mounting, I just used some silicone rubber instead of drilling any holes or anything and it's worked out just fine. Next we have an update on the high boost cell amplifier kit that I installed in the fall. So after about uh, seven eight months I can tell you only needed it around a half a dozen times but when you need it you need it and it worked quite well. Here's some footage of a use case I had when I was camped uh, on Vancouver Island and needed to pull some weak cell signals from over in the USA. Just an update on the cell booster, the high boost uh, booster. Like I said in my review videos, I rarely need the booster these days just because cell coverage is so good. But I just happened to be in one site where I really needed it to work. Basically we're in this heavily trade site and uh, I'm trying to actually get a hold of a signal that's across the water in the USA. We're actually in Canada on Vancouver Island. And even with the booster connected to the ladder where I usually had it, I was getting kind of spotty in and out signal. So what I did is I took a flagpole and using the extra length of cable, 
I uh, put the antenna on top of the flagpole and once we got it up that high even with these trees we started getting a very solid signal so basically it goes from not even being able to connect without a booster to the booster with the antenna on the RV roof getting a connection but coming in and out often I guess due to weather really fringe signal till I got it up there and with the antenna up on the the flagpole mass there. I'm getting a good signal. We can stream video. Web pages load fast. So like I say, you don't often need the booster these days, but when you do, you do. Next is what's called the Lion Cooler. So it's a fridge or a freezer depending on what you set the temperature at. And it has a digital setting here you can go up and down change temperature whatever you feel like it this one i think is the 42 quart lots of capacity so i used this for about eight months of off-grid camping and it really came in handy um, so we could get more groceries at one time and keep stuff frozen and then cycle it into our main rv fridge also i really liked it when i had to go to groceries from say you know 40 or 50 minute drive to get groceries I could put all the all the stuff that really needs to be cold like the meats and milk and eggs and stuff into this and you know arrive back at the camper and I have cold groceries also it's nice to put the cold groceries into our RV fridge keeps it from going lower in temperature putting warmer food in it um, worked out pretty good. I didn't use the solar panel too much because I have quite a bit of solar but you can plug it. It came with a 100 watt solar panel that I could plug in right there. I mostly used the DC plug and plugged it into my uh, camper or a, or a portable power box that I keep. Or when we're driving I would plug that into the car's DC outlet so that I could, if we had like a four or five hour trip I could keep powering the fridge and keep it charged. Also nice that it comes with a battery pack here, a lithium battery pack. So say you drive to uh, the grocery store and you're in there for like an hour or so, this thing will just keep running and keep the fridge nice and cool. So the only thing about the battery is I saw recently a very similar battery had a problem where it actually exploded and caught fire. So let me just pull that out and I'll discuss it a bit. Here's the battery and the video I saw was not this brand, it was a different brand. They seem to use this pack in a lot of different fridges and freezers. Now also I don't know what kind of batteries were in it. You know, the grade of batteries. This, these take 18650 battery, which is common. It's in all sorts of things, you know. All kinds of tool batteries and different things use that same battery flashlights and stuff like that. But I think from looking at the video what happened is they overcharged it. They, they had like a solar panel they said going into this. Um, now the solar panel hookup on this cooler you have to go through into the actual cooler itself and not the battery. And I looked through the manual and they did make a point of saying you need this special charger if you want to charge the battery separate. And uh, they said that the input cannot exceed 12.6 volts. And this is a 12.6 volt. And that's, that's sold as an optional accessory if you want to charge your battery outside of the fridge freezer. Now inside the fridge freezer you can charge the battery, but I imagine what's built into the fridge freezer is a controller that gives it the exact voltage you want. So lithium, if you overcharge them or charge them with too much current, they can get quite volatile because they're not using a lithium iron oxide type battery, they're using the 18650 battery, which, which you don't want to overcharge. Now I'd hope that they would put safety features in these things. I can't say whether this has it or not, but it shouldn't catch on fire and explode like that one did. There should be some type of safety feature, but I thought I would uh, mention that just in case people are looking to buy one of these freezers. Just uh, beware that these batteries can be volatile if they're overcharged. And the final two I have for you today are the 30 amp transfer switch that I installed it's from Go Power, installed in my RV so that I can hook different things in and then when I hook onto shore power it automatically would switch my 30 amp service between 
two different sources. And the second source, other than shore power, that I use a lot are these power stations. So the 30 amp transfer switch from GoPower worked flawlessly. Um, I could plug whatever power box like this into it. And then when I went to shore power and plugged in my shore power, it would delay for maybe a minute and then switch over automatically. So that really worked out well because I like having these power boxes when I'm off grid camping to supplement my main battery system. What I do is I use the inverter in this to power all the sockets in the RV so I can run microwaves and all sorts of things like that. And then I charge this with the different power sources. I have a video all about it. I'll link to it how I have all my, my system wired together. I've kind of a convoluted system since I've been doing this for 11 years. I keep adding to it and adding to it and adding to it. So I'll give you that a schematic and you can go look at that if you're interested. Anyway, that gets me to the final thing, this EcoFlow Delta Max. But of all the stations I've tested so far, this has been my favorite, um, mainly because you can see how small of a size it, it is for it has a battery of uh, 2048 watt hours I think its inverter is good for 22 or 2200 watts so I just plug my uh, transfer switch cord into one of these sockets and it can run everything in the RV uh, the main feature that I really like about this other than the smaller size and weight of it is you can adjust your charge rate and also its charge rate is extremely high. So if I'm off grid boondocking, because I can charge this basically with all the power my generator can put out, I got a 2000 watt generator, 1600 watts of constant power. I can set this for 1600 watts and I get my full charging through its AC. Also, I could have solar going at the same time of up to 800 watts. So I could put 2600 watts into this thing, which is really nice because when you're off-grid boondocking you really want to have fast charge especially if you're in like a state park that only has very limited generator hours and people say oh well you just need solar well if you come to BC and camp under trees that uh, kind of goes out the window especially with all our cloudy wet weather that we get so it's very much an advantage to have something that charges really fast but it also has a feature where you can change your charging rate open this up it has a switch fast charge or custom slow charge so in slow mode i can go through their app which i like it's one of the better apps i've seen the bluetooth app for it and i can set anywhere from 200 up to 1800 watts in 100 watt increments and adjust that charge so sometimes i really want to do that especially if i'm going down the road and i want this to run my fridge um, I might set I might set it at a certain amount of watts. It needs, I think, 400 watts <clears throat> max to run run the fridge element, and then I want to put charge back into it. But I don't want it to to take 1800 watts because I have another inverter that I can charge with my other solar system. So I, I can set this to say, oh, I just want a 200 watt charge. So it won't sap all the power out of my other batteries. Everything will be nice and equalized. So I really found that handy. Also, if you have a generator, say you want to use a 1000 watt generator, well, you can set that custom to only charge at, say, 900 watts, and then you'll be able to utilize a smaller generator. So that's a great feature, too. So overall, like I say, I've, I've reviewed two of the Blue Eti models that are very similar, and the Lion Energy Safari ME model. And out of all those, I think this is the one I personally carry so far. They keep changing these every six months or a year. There's a new model, but current state of things, this is by far my my favorite. Also, it's able to uh, add extra battery packs, up to two extra battery packs at around 2,000 watts each. So, if you needed, you could uh, you could uh, add more power. And finally, the fans. The fans aren't as noisy as those other boxes. They're very very nice and mellow sounding fans. So. The, I like to keep it in my basement storage compartments. I don't really hear fan noise too much, but this one I barely even know it's there. And also its display is nice. Pretty bright display that I can see in, in fairly bright light. And also it still has all 
regular switches. I didn't like the, the Blue Eti one because it only counted on the display and it was a touch screen display. Whereas this one has an app, your regular display readout, but it still has physical buttons. Anyway, I don't want to gush too much, but uh, out of all of them, people always ask me, you know, which one would you get right now? This is the, the winner. So there you go. I hope you found those review updates useful. And if you want to look, go back and see the original review videos, I'll link to them. Or just head over to loveurv.com and use the search, search feature if you want to check them out. Till next time, Ray from loveurv.com. Cheers, everyone.